All right, hopefully this shows up on camera easy. I'm trying something new. Okay, let me get my uh, screwdriver here. So this is gonna be, this is one of the consoles I'm in the middle of finishing repair on. It's got a bad B button that doesn't work really well, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the D-pad perspective, because it's in a different spot. So I'm gonna get my favorite screwdriver. This thing is amazing, by the way. Um, what's the brand? It's this right here. I've got, it came in a really cool kit. I think it's just 65 bucks, which is not bad. Um, it's uh, made by Hoto and it's got a whole bunch of bits and everything there and it's uh, charged by USB-C and it's just a nice pin holder and it's got just a button here for reverse and forward. Really great. I've been looking for a really good um, pin screwdriver for a long time and uh, years in fact that one that would actually last and be durable and that's the first one that i found and i've had it now for about three months and it's been really great so you'll unscrew these two screws pull the plate off <clears throat> oops uh, make sure that you're using an anti-static mat though and an anti-static wrist strap um this is a mat that i got from ifixit and then it has a wrist strap right here that you put on and uh, I'll show you. And then it attaches to uh, a piece out there and then there's a cable that goes down and I connect it to a metal ground. It's important because static electricity is the silent killer and it will actually murder uh, your console. Uh, there's been consoles when I was first started doing this a long time ago. And there's a lot, uh, I, I unfortunately killed a couple of motherboards that way. And there's been many customers that tried to do their own repairs that weren't paying attention and um, yeah, they were, they uh, killed their console. That's not good. So the first thing you want to do is take out the battery. Make sure that um, there's nothing that's going to just 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 take out the battery so that way you don't hurt anything or you, we do not want power delivered to anything inside here. Um, and now I need my pick. I've got this uh, cricket little pick thing here. You can use whatever you want to because you got to pull these two. Uh, Ribbons out. Okay, and then that there. And then we'll go back to my screwdriver. And we need to, I, I, I use this for everything pretty much. And then I still have uh, a nicer one to do by hand to do like finger tightenings and, and different things because these screws, um, when you're trying to get to the you know, the motherboard here, these screws are actually really fragile and you can strip them so easily. There is nothing worse than having a strip screw because there is, normally with a strip screw, you can try to use a couple different things. Like I've got a little black, uh, I took a rubber band and I cut up little tiny squares. Um, and that's what you can do to put on the end of the screwdriver and put it right there to try and let it have some grip to this to come out if it's stripped. But if that doesn't work, um, I've tried super glue, hot glue, many things over the years. Um, you're pretty much hosed. You have to use a Dremel tool and drill it out and then you have to replace the whole back plate. Um, Cause the, it's just very hard to do it with these ones because you've got such a, they're such small screws, but the biggest problem is that they're receded pretty far in there. So you have to go in such a tight space. You can't, you don't have a lot of options with something like that. So just be aware of that. So now when we, we got the back plate off, we got the battery out. Make sure you take out a stylus if you have it, a cartridge if you have it, your uh, SD card storage if, it, if it's in there. Well, yours should be in there. Um, you should have something in there for sure. And then we're going to take out all these screws. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me do that real quick. That's why. Make sure that you have something that, nearby that you can organize these screws with. If you don't have a nice mat like I do over here, one thing I used to do when I was, I didn't have a nice mat as I had little rubber bands here that I just um, put off on the side uh, and then put the screws in there so that way they wouldn't roll out. And then I also would know, um, you know, where they went to. That's one thing you can do. I'm just gonna show you that there on the side. Just an idea. Anything to keep it organized in your mind because that's the important thing is these screws have, there's a couple different lengths of screws here. And so you do not want to mix those up. You'll be in big trouble. All right. 
The important thing to note too is you don't want to ever feel like you're forcing a screw out because these, like I said, you don't want them to strip. That's really, really bad. So when I'm re removing them, I use this all the time, but when I'm actually putting them back in, more often than not, I'll just do this one by hand because it's just very careful. Okay, now, removing this back plate is easy once you do it the right way. So what you have to do, and this is this is important. So this is a piece of plastic right here that's got a line. We're gonna, we're gonna find the gap right here, pull up from this first, only a little bit, and then we're gonna push forward. And the reason for that is because you've got a little a headphone jack right here. Hope it's focusing right. And there's a little plastic piece that that is right here that lifts underneath that. If you try and yank up on this, you will actually rip out your headphone jack and you'll be a very, very sorry and happy kid. Um, so we'll get one of my uh, little things here. You can use a guitar pick or whatever. Just, just a little bit. You'll see that that gap pops up almost immediately. Also, be careful of removing this open because if you look right here very carefully, you've got a ribbon cable here and right there. And those are for your speakers. So I, I pull up and I push down just gently enough to get this little lip out from underneath the headphone jack. Okay. And then we're gonna tilt this up just a little bit, very gently. And then I've got my, try to use plastic whenever possible. Don't don't use metal. Well, where's my plastic uh, little spudger at? Oh, it's over there. <clears throat> I think it makes a really nice kit, um, uh, inexpensive one that comes with this and a couple other things on it. I think it's about 20 or 30 bucks. And we're going to go in here. This is the, the piece we're going to go for. Just under there, gently just pop it up. And there it is. There you go. We're in the back now of the 3DS. Well, the new 3DS XL. So the nice thing about the new 3DS XL is that the motherboard was done in, in multiple parts. You've got one, two three, and then underneath there, four. Unfortunately for you, for, fortunately for me, with the B button, I need to just pull this out, unplug the ribbon cable, and I gotta fix that one. Unfortunately for you, you have to pull out this, 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 and this joystick to get to the D-pad. Um, so we'll get there. We'll do it together. And this is a video meant for you specifically about how to get to your D-pad and clean the D-pad and everything, but I'm also gonna probably put this up on my um, YouTube channel to show other people how to do it the right way. All right, so let me make sure I have another rubber band over here because I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this assuming you don't have the same tools as me. So what we'll do up here, and I'll put this in camera so that way you can see it. Um, here are the outer body screws, right? And then these are going to be the screws for the C stick, I guess you would call it, and the A, B, X, Y buttons. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and then we're gonna gently, with this end, lift up on this tab. Be very careful. There we go. And then we'll pull that out. You can do that with your fingers if you want to, but if you do touch anything, with your fingers, make sure that you've washed your hands with soap and water and dry them off completely before doing that because the, the oils on your fingers can ruin stuff. I like to use my, uh, not these ones, my rubber tipped, uh, I have a couple of these, rubber tipped uh, tweezers because that way it helps reduce uh, static electricity. And whenever you're picking up these motherboard pieces, pick them up from the sides and don't touch the face. So, here is the, the D-pad, right here. Not the D-pad, but the A, B, X, Y buttons. And the D-pad's gonna be somewhat similar to this. <coughs> um, but the reason why I was telling you earlier before, if you've got clicky, a clicky D-pad, just like how it is on this side of the board, it's gonna be the same on the other side. What happens is that you've got your, your buttons right here, and then they have a, a rubber membrane that covers those to seal them off from the motherboard, so that way any dust or crumbs that, that gets in here won't get to here. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they, they won't because this is really a tight seal. And so what you would be doing basically is pulling off this and then, you know, with the air duster or whatever, uh, uh, dry that out. And then with the Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, going in there and cleaning that and then air dusting out this little thing too. 
and then you're just replacing that back. And then generally that's gonna fix it. Fix your problem with your clicky D-pad. But this is also applies to um, the ABXY button, the start and select button, everything. That way, um, if you've got a button or that's not fully pushing in all the way and not working, then you'll be able to most likely fix that with that. If that's not the case and um, that doesn't fix it, the only other thing that would be um, that would be the culprit for this is going to be these middle contact pads here. And that's not too bad. With this one, that's what this is. You can buy new metal contact pad stickers. Uh, and they're just like five bucks. Um, and then you just peel this off and then put those on. Um, and But when you're peeling these off though, you gotta be really careful. Where's my tweezers at? My, uh, not rubber tweezers, but my normal tweezers. Oh, it's right over here. Did I move that? It should be right here. Hold on one second. I find that very odd that they would just disappear like that. I keep all my stuff in the same space. Or did I cover it up by accident with uh, this? I must have moved it when I was clearing a space to do this thing for the filming. Anyways, we could probably do this with my finger, make fingernail, but I gotta be careful. But I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna grab my other set of tweezers. I have a backup set from my other iFixit kit. So I've got two of them here, and I'll show you. Um, my nicer one, though, it's got this. Pull up my set here. Which tweezers should I use? I don't know, maybe this one? Okay. All right, put my static wrist strap back on. I'll find those other tweezers later. These are like a fine, very, very fine uh, tooth set. And you gotta be very careful um, with these ones because you need to make sure that you don't um, hurt the motherboard. Now you're just peeling off the top layer and to try and show you that, let me get one of these out. Uh, that's not the right one, that's not the right one. I've got them all mixed up. I need to divide them out because they go to different models of 3DS or 2DS. So let me just pull these out. This one is for a different model. This one. You gotta look at the shape in the center too to make sure you know which one goes, goes to which. I think is this one? <clears throat> okay, I guess that one. What you're basically doing is uh, going in here and trying to gently just lift up that layer. I'm not going to do it to the D-pad on this one. I'm only going to do the ABXY one on this one. You gotta be really careful that way you don't um, scratch the motherboard. There we go. It's hard to see, but I got it. So you're not, you're not trying to peel up the white part, you're actually trying to peel up a clear part that goes over the white part. So don't dig at the white part of it. You'll see it here in a second how clear that is. It's a very, very thin, Piece. All right, so I got at least one side of it up and I'll just grab it with my finger, peel it off. There we go. So 
if it's not dust that's going to kill your uh, console, it's this. If you look right here, this is a contact pad for it. If you look underneath, you see all these little wear spots. Let's try and get it to focus. Where some of them are small from button pushes and some of them are really big. Is that focusing right? Yeah, like this one's small up here, that one's gigantic right there. It's these little metal pieces that make that clicky feel that touch and contact uh, the motherboard to make sure that it registers a button push when you actuate it. Okay. So, well, I gotta put these over here too, that way I don't lose them. These are the little rubber nubs. And uh, now what we wanna do is take a, a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, use stuff that is actually 90% or higher. So that way you don't leave any residue behind and it dries fast to clean them. Because these things don't see the light of day very much and they just have a lot of debris there. There you go. And I've got a fan on above me, on low, so I'll leave it over here to help it dry off. Having an anti-static mat is really key because you can just sit your stuff out and not have to really worry about it. And then while I'm doing this, I'm going to also clean this. This is dirty. Real dirty. Yeah. And let that dry. This one need to be cleaned too? Not really, but while I'm here, it does not hurt to do that. Okay. I know you didn't want to know about that one um, in particular, or if you don't want to know about this one, you want to go to another one, you know, this is the time to fast forward um, to the next part because you can do that whenever you want to. Okay, so now we're going to pull up this very gently. And then we're going to take our plastic spudger and then lift up right here. This is the antenna. The Wi-Fi chip antenna, up really gently. Be very careful with that. If you if you put too much stress under here, or if you try to lift it up from the back side, out the front side, you will rip you will, you will rip this thing out, and then you are in big trouble. Because replacing that cable, that cable runs all the way through the hinge at the top. Is you're doing a full tear down and you're taking out the screen and everything. It is not a good time. Okay, so we're gonna just go through and do, undo all of these uh, ribbons. So this one you just lift about. This one right here, you just put this behind the loop and then I'm gonna make this bigger here. Put this behind the loop and then put your finger on top of it and just pull back. They just pull out, there's no tabs for this one. So the ones that have just pull out things on them, um, we'll do those first. This one's probably one of the more stressful ones. Up under here, put this under here, put your, foot on put your finger on top of that to give it tight grip just pull back and then this is a tab we lift up and this is a, a pull back tab too and then there you go there's actually these these are actually done and designed really well you can tell by whether the flap is white or black which way the cable is supposed to be fixing uh, facing in there and this will help you too when you're going to put it back together so if the tab is black, that means the cable is, is facing uh, shiny side down. If it's white, the cable is facing shiny side up. I'll show you that right here. And I'll put this down underneath it behind it and pull out. So you see that right there when I say shiny side. That's what I mean, this shiny side. Also, usually when you see this right here, this little black line on the cable, that means it's an IPS display. So is this an IPS? It is, see, bought, I already said bought IPS. The button just came out, that's okay. It was gonna come out anyways with those rubber, mem with those rubber membranes out. Put them over here. So yes, so you'll know if your screen for sure, if you're not if you're not quite sure or not, if it's if it's an IPS screen or not, because there's always a black mark right there on the cable for the top screen and the bottom screen. This is the bottom screen. <clears throat> they all have that mark. Um, and now we're gonna do this one right here. 
These are the cables. There's three of them here. Go on, go up. There we go. Um, that go through the barrel hinge to the top. So there's three of them here, and that will be the top screen, the speakers, the 3D effect thing, and your camera. That's This is the, the most stressful part to replace. There's a dust bunny there. That's crazy how there's a dust bunny right there. How did it even get that far in? And then we've undone, undone this, undone this. And then we've got this one right here, which is the D-pad, but I'm not gonna do that yet. We're gonna go back to here. We're gonna do the joystick first. Undo these screws. These are the longest screws in the console, by the way. So they're longer than everything else. So I'm gonna put them. I have another rubber band over here and there. And then you're gonna take your plastic spudger tool and right here, there's a little piece where you can just pry up really gently, move it over. And then there's a tab right here. Pull it out, put it with its screws. And then you've got this plastic uh, disc here. It's like a friction plate, is what I call them. It It's what uh, interfaces with this plastic thing and this other friction plate to make sure that, that you get that smooth feel. And then when you're doing this here, look at that, gross. Go in here and clean this out too. Get the dust out, get the grime out, and then wipe that clean with the, that's so gross. Wipe that clean with the, where's my tooth, where's my Q-tip at? Oh, here it is. Clean that out. Let's do that real quick. Wow, you have to get the dust out of there. There's still a lot more. The other side. Okay, it's all pretty much gone now. It really helps to clean these things out to make sure that things are actually um, working the way they should. All right. So now we're gonna do undo all the screws. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So we'll just work on that. And I'm going to put them in their own little rubber band circle here. These are all of a different length as well too. So like I'm saying, make sure that you keep them separated. Gotta keep them separated. Hey, hey. Offspring song. Okay, let's see here. And then I've got one more tab that I forgot to pop up. This is for the touch screen. Or it would, it would, to be more specific, the digitizer. It's, not, it's just the glass piece that um, covers the bottom screen to protect it. And that is all the screws, I believe. And so now we're not going to lift that up because you still have two more ribbon cables to go. So what you want to do first, open the console completely and lay it flat. Doing this reduces the stress and, and gives you more slack from the ribbon, the three ribbon cables that come through the, the thing up to here. And so now we'll just gently, from here, from this point, I'm gonna zoom out. From this point and this point, so I'm touching the charging port and the headphone jack, so I'm not touching the motherboard really. If I can keep it lifted up and then fold it down. We're almost there. We've got two more tabs to, to lift up. Now do this one. Okay. Gently pull it out. This one. Then gently. There we go. That's the main motherboard. We're gonna set that aside. We are almost there, my man. Okay or woman, whoever's watching this. And now we've got the cartridge slot and then the D-pad. So I've got three screws here to, oops, you can fold this back now. Cartridge slot and the D-pad. So we're gonna do one, Two, three screws, I believe. 
So three. All right, put these screws over to the side. And then I gotta undo this tab right here. But now that's the cartridge slot. Now we finally made it to the D-pad. If you've got this problem with your D-pad, I, I, I feel for you because it requires you to do the entire motherboard just to even get to it. And there it is. We finally made it. Take out these four screws. That is your D-pad. So unfortunately for this one, unlike with the A, B, X, Y buttons, there's no sticker to replace this, uh, these contact pads. Um, but um, you can buy replacement D-pads. I think, how much do they cost? Well, I like $10. If cleaning up this dust doesn't help fix things. What we're gonna do is check this and uh, clean this off with the um, Q-tip and then clean this out as well too and dust it and then make sure that it's all looking good. Where am I? I need another Q-tip. Come, Come here, buddy. Can never have too many Q-tips. jar here of rubbing alcohol. I'm going to clean these. Let that dry. But that is how you get to um, the bottom of the uh, new 3DS XL. And if you wanted to get even further than that, you can. There's not much further to go, to be honest with you. Um, if you're replacing the uh, joystick here itself, what you're gonna need to do, and I'll zoom in, is unlike the first washer over here that interfaces with this thing, it's just one solid piece. This one is not. You can see right there, there's a cut right there. And that's handy because you can turn the joystick over here to the side. You see this little cut? You can just push this down and push it down and through that hole right here push it through and it will pop on the other side of this. And then what you can then do after that is you can just gently push down on one of these corners of the plastic thing and then just twist it out to replace the joystick. And then you twist the new one back in to, to replace that. Um, and then this right here is the bottom screen. You can pull up on these four tabs right here, pull that back, this will pop off. And then the next part is actually pretty intense and I'm not gonna do that on this video because um, this, one doesn't need, this one doesn't need a touchpad. But uh, yeah, so that's what you do. And then um, once you clean this out, uh, you take a look at this and see if it, if it needs any, uh, if these feel, you know, really good. And this one feels like really, really great. Uh, then it's probably just the dust particles that are there on your D-pad and then just follow this video in reverse and put everything back together. So we'll start doing that. <laughs> so we put that part in next. This part right here. This video is going to be super long, unfortunately. That's how. That's that's kind of how it goes though with repairs. Is these are pretty involved. This one dry? It is dry, great. Oops, duh. This is why you always double check your stuff. It, it would suck to be all that, go, go all that way. Oops. And then forget to put the rubber membrane back on. Usually when I'm doing these by myself, I'm, I have a video in front of me of somebody else doing it or myself doing it if I have it re-recorded. So that way I can just follow along as I go. And that way I don't forget to put a screw in somewhere. 
If you've not been doing this for a super long time, like 20 years, every once in a while you forget something. Maybe your kid will come in or you get a phone call and you get distracted, right? And then you go back to like, hey, where was I? That's why these videos are important. Nice to have a checklist of art to follow along with, especially when you're not familiar with it and you've got so many screws to go through. I'm pretty sure though, after watching this video, the person that I'm originally making this for, a guy that bought a console from me, may not want to do this because it takes so much time to get to there. If it was if it was just the, the A, B, X, Y buttons, it would be very easy to do for most people. But this one's, it, getting all the way down to here is really intimidating for most people. It was for me when I first did it a long time ago. There's a lot you can break. Okay, so this part's done. Now we have the D-pad in. And that's okay, if you're not comfortable with something, that's okay. You can always just send your console to me and I'll fix it for you. That's one of the things I do. I don't just refurbish consoles and sell them, I also repair them. Let's see. Zoom out. Okay, now you've got three screws. So we've got them over here. You can't see them off screen, but they're out of the lens there, but I've got all of my screws. Oops. Organized in piles. Okay. That's starting to slip a little bit. If it starts to slip a little bit, we go to the hand. We are not gonna force a screw in. Never force a screw in. These are so fragile already. Only do it until it gives you a, a, a little bit of resistance. That way you make sure that you don't strip it because it's not coming back out. These are not like your normal industrial strength screws. They are much fra more fragile. All right, and then we're going to put this back in. I have a different set of uh, tweezers I like to use for this one. Oops. I have a special uh, ridges to them. But these ones you got to be really gentle with because if you squeeze too much on these ribbon cables because they're so fragile, you could break them. Okay, that's in. Come on, come here. I'm trying to grab all my tools and make sure everything stays in frame on the camera, and that's, this is not easy to do. Okay, there's that. Push it down until it clicks. All right, now the hard part. We're gonna open up the console again. We're gonna grab the scariest part to mess with, this part. This is the most annoying part too. All right, so I want, how do I keep this in frame without, like that, tilt it. I'm gonna take this one, and there's three of them here, right? So you take the top one, fold that over and under the motherboard, because it'll be on top. You want to go with this one first. And you can see that this is a white one, this is a black one. Don't make the mistake a lot of people make, and then put this cable in like this, and, uh, Go to turn on your console after you put everything back together and uh, realize that your bottom screen or your top screen is not working because you plugged it in wrong. So this one, this is hard to do with my stand here. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. And then tuck the gold side up into there. There we go. Make sure it's all the way in and flush. And be very careful to not try and pull this cable up at all it's very, there's a lot of tension going through this, this hinge up to the top screen and you will tear this cable so easily. This is the, this is the main thing that, de that destroys most consoles. And then just make sure that it's tight in there and push the tab down. Okay, so that's white flap, so gold side up. This is a dark flap, so gold side is down. Take this very carefully and then flip it like that okay Whew. this is the one that breaks the most by the way so just fair warning i'm gonna turn this to the side to make it easier for me 
and tuck this in. It's very sad when this one breaks. If any of these cables break, you have to replace, you have to take all three cables out. Okay, so I put it in there. Make sure it's tight. And then tab down. That's the hardest part of the entire thing. If you made it this far, pat yourself on the back because honestly, that's the most stressful thing you can do. Okay, now we're gonna fold this back over. We're gonna make sure that all of these cables, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six. All those don't get stuck underneath the motherboard. So you gotta get your plastic uh, spudger tool. Oh my goodness, where did I put you over here? Okay, I'm gonna pop this out. Make sure this one, these top, there's three on the top. Three up here, three ribbons and one antenna on top or out. Okay, that's four right there. Make sure this one's out. This bottom one, make sure this one's out. And then this one right here, make sure this one is pushed to the side. Just kind of get that. Okay, they're all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they're there. And then just slot it over these two, uh, these three plastic uh, uh, stands there. All right, that's good. Now, with all those things up, we're going to put the screws in first, and then we're going to tighten all the cables. So let's grab those screws. <clears throat> One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, and then that's all done. I'm gonna put this cable in now. Let's just slides in right here. Make sure that's tight. You'll know because there's going to be no gap on these little corners. And snap it in. Then we're going to take this and just push this over and down until that's snapped in. And now we've got to go through and just get all the ribbon cables in now. I'll zoom in a little bit. So we got this bottom one first. Remember white, flap, which means gold up. Be careful with this one. This is an IPS screen. Okay, that one's in. This one's one of the more annoying ones to do because there's not much slack for you. All right, that's in all the way. Just double check. And then tab goes over. And then this will go in here. So this is not going to be a, a click on tab thing, right? It's going to be a slide in. So you need to have a good grip on it without hurting it too much. That's why these tweezers are really good. Right the tweezers will actually have a chance of cutting these things. Come on now. There we go. Let me get my uh, lamp over here so I can get some more light on this. My old eyes. All right, so we're gonna slide that in. Come on, you little turd. There we go. That's in all the way now. Okay, and then, um, this is a slide in one too. So 
So I'll just gently get that to where it's going to be, where it needs to be. I'm going to turn this to the side. Slide that one in. We got another slider down here at the bottom. Let's plug this thing back into its little slot here, though. I think this is the speaker or the, the microphone. Come on, you little turd. Just go in there. And then this right here. This one can be really tricky. Um, not for putting it in, but um, when you're putting the console back together. And I'll tell you in a second. This slides in right. Come on, just go in there. Just. I keep thinking to myself, that's what she said. My goodness. There we go. It's all the way in. Now, this one, make sure this ribbon is tucked in. Right there. If you don't, when you try to put the plastic cover back over that, you can pinch that and cut it in half. Okay, and then this part here just snaps back on over its little thing. Now that all three of these are in, we can just close this safely. And now what we're gonna do is, uh, this is in, this is in, this is in. Oh, we have one more left. Two more left, actually. We're gonna do the touchscreen. Pop this up. Or the digitizer is the real name. Slide that in. This one's kind of hard to tell if it's all the way in or not because it's so fragile already. It's hard to see. There's there should be little dots and lines there. You can see that that you know once you get to that that part, it's all the way in. And you gotta keep this thing up too because if you don't. It will try and fl the flap will try and close itself as you push the ribbon in and then it doesn't let you finish what you started. All right, there we go. All right, it's all the way in. There we go. Oh, it, it tilted on me as I clicked it. Little turd. There we go. And now it's in. Okay, joystick. There you are over here. What I like to do is uh, use my finger. I'm gonna push this back up. Turn this like that. Facing up. That's the proper way to, to do it, honestly. You could do it the other way, but this is this makes it easy. And then you're gonna turn it like that, make sure it's kind of centered. Then you're gonna take the other slider, friction plate, put it right over top of that so it's ready. Then you're gonna take this one and plug it into that. So, man, this is gonna be, this one's always annoying to do too. Um, okay. See if the flap will let me just stick it inside there without trying to. Oh, it's going to try and close on me. Okay, that's all the way in. Now I'm going to put my finger underneath this so that way it stays in place where it's supposed to be as I just gently push this over into it. Okay, now hold this in really hard with your finger and then just double check. Is it moving in all directions? Snapping back the way it should. You've got it in the right spot. Now you take your two super long screws. Where are we at in this video? 45 minutes, holy cow. There you 
we go. That's done. And then the last thing to do is this one. We will put the new sticker on top of that here in a, in a little bit. And then you would then attach it into there, do the uh, three black screws, and then the five silver screws, right? I'm gonna do this off camera just to make sure that I don't make this video way longer than it needs to be. And then after that, you will then take this, plug this into there, plug this into here. So it would be like that. Ding. And then once those are snapped in, while you're holding this up like, up like this, you're gonna gently push this first, tuck it underneath this, so that way it doesn't pinch that cable or that, and then gently snap this forward. By, if you may need to pull up on the lip a little bit to get it right there, and then just do all those screws, and you're done. That's the video. That's how you get to the bottom of the new 3DSXL and clean out your, your buttons. <laughs>